Hollywood may be afraid to anger China, there are some stories that won't be silenced. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. I've got bad news for you. All those superheroes you admire so much, they sold out to China. It's not just them. All of Hollywood has sold out to China. In 2020, the Chinese film market officially surpassed North America's as the world's biggest box office, all but ensuring that Hollywood studios will continue to do everything possible for access to the country. And since the Chinese Communist Party enforces strict censorship, that means you won't be seeing any Hollywood movies about Tibetans, or Uyghurs, or how the Chinese Communist Party is trying to undermine the United States by infiltrating American institutions like Hollywood. That last one sounds like a real blockbuster. But that doesn't mean movies about China aren't being made. Independent directors are creating wonderful films exploring life under the Chinese Communist Party, like director Leon Li. We had him on the show a few years ago to talk about his movie Letters from Ma Sanjia, a true story about a man who snuck out a letter from one of China's most notorious labor camps by hiding it in Kmart Halloween decorations. I'll put a link to that episode down below. But this January 21st, He's releasing a new movie called Unsilenced. It's based on true events about a group of university students in Beijing who risked their lives to help an American reporter break through China's censorship. And since it stars friend of the show actress, beauty queen, and activist Anastasia Lin, I decided to talk to her about the upcoming movie. Anastasia, it's great to have you back on. Always a pleasure to have my favorite beauty queen on the show. Oh, thank you. I know. It's great to be here again. Yeah, well, I mean, the main idea is that, you know, we'll put you on the thumbnail, get lots of clicks. This is this is a cash grab for me. Yeah, I thought so. Well, who want to see Leon's face, right? <laughs> ah, Leon, the director of the movie that we will be talking about. You don't insult the director of your movie when you're trying to promote your movie, Anastasia, these are things I shouldn't have to tell you. Yeah, I, I can barely hear you over the internet, but um, sure, why not? <laughs> Perfect answer. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about the movie. What What is Unsilenced about? So Unsilenced is a movie that um, Leon uh, spent about two years interviewing different parties, including the people who are persecuted in China and the people, Western reporters who work in China and um, try to expose their human rights abuses and all of their stories. And he wrote the script and we produced it in Taiwan last year, um, two years ago, 2020. So you, you were filming this movie at the height of the pandemic in Taiwan. What was that like? It was nice. I, I escaped the pandemic for like two months. Um, Taiwan was totally free, basically. Everything was open. Um, I get to eat inside and go shopping while everyone else on the set is working. So that was nice. I hate you. Sorry? <laughs> Why did the audio get so bad? Uh, you're wonderful and very sweet. So I'm curious, this movie is, you know, about... It deals with a lot of heavy things about, you know, persecution in China. Did you guys face any pressure at all while you were making this movie? Well, yes, certainly. <laughs> Everyone else faced a lot of pressure. I went shopping and had a lot of fun in Taiwan. It's just so easy being a beauty queen, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, it was really an honor to join this cast. I think everyone worked on this film made a choice that they... Um, are willing to take a risk for this uh, this film to be produced so that people can see what is going on inside China and the stories that didn't get, uh, is not really getting told in the West as well. So every day uh, on set with the production, there had been crisis. There are actors who dropped out every single day. 
like people who we have casted uh, all of a sudden decided that this is not for them. Um, and there are locations that are getting canceled. Um, things that we signed suddenly getting uh, canceled. It was really an adventure. <laughs> Well, I, I could imagine that for like a Hollywood film where, you know, they're they're doing every craven thing they can to get into China. But you're filming in Taiwan and people were that afraid? Well, I'm not quite sure why Hollywood films want to get into China. Either. Money! You just see the state of the celebrities. <laughs> Money, Anastasia. Um, well, yeah, but how long would that last? That's a, you know, a question for There's people. There's always more money. Um... In the short term, it might look like you can get a lot. But if you look at the state of Chinese artists, uh, people, artists in China who want to produce really meaningful projects, those things don't really get heard. Um, people who want to produce things that are worthwhile get a lot of pressure. And I don't think as an artist, I want to work in an environment, no matter like that, no matter how much money or profit it gives in the short term. Because I think in the long term, it does stifle the soul. There had been a period of time where Chinese artists were had that little window to be able to speak. So we see films like Farewell the Concubine that reflected on China's cultural revolution. And those are true Chinese voices that depict the real China. And those things are so moving and classic. If you remove the soul from an art piece, and market it however you want and just for the profit of you know short-term profit those things won't last at least that's my thought but maybe i'm being too idealistic oh you mean another spider-man movie won't be with us for centuries to come it's been a while since i've been to the theater so <laughs> amen <laughs> but so why you know, the threats that happened uh, on set, just the difficulties of making this kind of movie, the fact that you aren't getting, you know, big Hollywood studio money. Why, why did you and all the others involved in the film, why were you willing to go through this to tell the story in Unsilenced? Well, for me, mostly it was because of my character. I played a Chinese journalist who faced a lot of pressure to... Um, to, to compromise um, her integrity and work somewhat in accordance to the Chinese state. Um, I never thought that this, this role can be so enlightening to me, that I would discover a piece of myself that is resonating with her experience of being pressured, um, had to make choices that are against her will, and, um, and I feel like there's something extremely universal about this experience. That's for me. And I think it, it is through experiences like this that I build my own character and my craft. Um, and it's a lot more meaningful. Now, for other actors, well, it was um, really a collaboration to see them devoting themselves into these extreme circumstances um, of their character. Like some are being tortured, some are being killed, some are being um, like having to face, uh, what would I call that? Short-term interest, uh, short-term career loss completely. But seeing them devote to those journey is really inspiring as well. Well, what I think it was, was really neat about uh, Unsilenced is, you know, this is the big question for people today. Like, you know, you find yourself in an authoritarian country. How much do you comply with what you're being told? How much do you believe the party line? What are you willing to do to other people to protect yourself? That's, that's really an issue like everyone should be asking themselves, what would they do? Exactly. I do feel like the characters in this film can resonate with everyone and everyone can find themselves in at least the, one of those characters. It's about making decisions that are true to yourself in circumstances that are unexpected. It could be under totalitarian regime, or it could be just in a society where 
um, everyone else is or seems like to be saying something totally different from what your heart is saying. And are you able to follow what you believe? And I, I think the message is extremely universal in this film. Well, I, I definitely saw reflections of myself in your character. Every time I saw your character, I was like, that's me. <laughs> How so? I think I'm good looking. <laughs> Thank you for the flattery. Oh, I, that was more about me than you. But thank you, you're welcome. So, uh, next stop, Hollywood? Uh, next stop, Hollywood? Uh, I don't know, it really depends on what they want to produce in the future. You could be the next Spider-Man. Spider-Woman. Why would I want to be the next Spider-Woman? All right, the next Thor? What do you want? What do actors do? Well, I think there are different kind of way to entertain and, and there's no right way to do it or wrong way. And um, sometimes I feel like I just need two hours to watch some of the films where it doesn't touch my real life as much. And it's for the pure purpose of entertainment and it's totally fine. When you come to see my film, this film, um, it might get you to think a lot, not... Not that we need to do that every single day. We're, we're trying to promote the movie. Don't talk about, don't make the people think. Mm, when you come to see this film, I, I think it will give you a lot of courage in the sense that you can see the true decisions how people living under a totalitarian regime have made, even if they're in very desperate circumstances. And... Um, that may give you a little piece of courage that things are really not so bad if you choose to not let them be. And that is probably a bit more important than the 25th Avengers movie. Anastasia, thank you for joining us. This was, this was a real treat. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. If you're interested in seeing Unsilenced, it opens in select theaters this January 21st. I put a link to the movie's website below. It's a powerful movie. I mean, not as powerful as The Incredible Hulk, but come on. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.